Welcome back. This is Where You Live with Gene and Tony, broadcasting from the Concierge Landscape Studios on this beautiful Christmas day. We're brought to you by Extreme Exteriors. It's time now for a message from the Minnesota Multi-Housing Association. The MHA Minute is brought to you by Pest Control Services. When you need an exterminator, you want someone reliable and effective. Call Greg Keener at Pest Control Services, 952-894-9748. Pest Control Services is a proud member of Angie's List and a proud member of the Minnesota Multi-Housing Association. That's Pest Control Services, 952-894-9748. Tell Greg that Gene and Tony said hi. When you rent out your home, you automatically become a small business owner and are subject to all kinds of rules and regulations. Fair housing laws, rental licensing, CRPs, lead paint, radon, carbon dioxide, just to name a few. As someone who provides rental housing, you'll have to learn more about your community, your city council, and your law enforcement agencies than you ever imagined. But if you properly manage your business, you'll also become an important and positive partner in the community. The Minnesota Multi-Housing Association is the most comprehensive resource you'll find for everything you need to help you successfully manage your rental business. Visit MMHA.com. That's two M's, MMHA.com. Look around the website, download the free guide to successful property management, download the free brochure about the eviction process, and learn about the many ways you can turn your small business into a good business. You know, that that MHA Minute was apropos of what we were just talking about. (laughs) When you become a landlord, you're going to learn more about your city government, your police protection, your county housing ordinance or issues yeah. than you ever dreamed you would need to know. And and I hope that you don't have to learn everything about those things because it, uh, it's better if you can stay out of those those areas and just run your business Or at least smoothly. learn them the hard way. But don't learn them the hard way. I hope yeah. you don't have to learn them the hard way. We were talking to Bill McGoy, and uh, he had some interesting points. And um, I get hung up, Gene, because I, I, think, I think the city of Minneapolis is very oppressive to landlords. They are not supportive. They want to blame landlords for anything and everything that goes on in the neighborhoods. They want to blame us for uh, criminal behavior because criminals live in rental property, mm-hmm. apparently. They want to blame us for the deterioration of the housing yeah. stock in the city of Minneapolis. They want to blame us for foreclosures. They want to blame us for vacant units. And the truth of the matter is, like Bill said, we only have control over the properties yeah. we own and the, and the condition of those properties. And, and I thought he brought out a great point, and that is if landlords truly could control all behavior so that crime doesn't exist, mm-hmm. that means those same tools and that same knowledge would be uh, accessible to, our, to the Minneapolis Police, police Department. department. <laughs> and the police department could... Um, run things, operate yeah. things in such a way so that there would be no crime. Yeah. The fact of the matter is you can't stop it. And because they can't, uh, it seems that there seems to be a, a little bit more of an emphasis on, well, you should, even though we can't. Right. You That's should. right. That's right. It, it's crazy. The, 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 the circular <laughs> logic we get caught up in. We we can't control the behavior of our tenants, but once in a while, I do get a police report or I get a letter, not in Minneapolis, but from the suburbs. They'll send me a letter saying, hey, you know what? We just conducted a drug bust either on your property or I've had St. Louis Park send me a letter saying, this resident of your property was busted elsewhere. We want you to evict them. So that's interesting, don't you think? They weren't even busted on the property, but they still... so. I've gone back and forth with the city saying, okay, we will give them notice to vacate, but I can't just kick them out tomorrow. Why not? They say to me. I said, well, because (laughs) this is a family with children. I need to do things in in an appropriate manner so that if I end up standing in front of a judge, I can explain Mm -hmm. what I did and why, because the courts will not uphold the city's wish to get all the criminals out of their borders. Yes, and and to me that seems to be where the major breakdown is Absolutely. because if if the city would only be more supportive of the landlord and said, "Look, we're showing some documentation that these people, that this landlord is wanting to evict right now are the cause of some bad issues at that right. at and around That's that right. property, that would take care of it." But you go to court and you say that and they just they just look at you like you're crazy. You don't have any proof of this criminal activity. You don't have any evidence. We are not going to evict this family 
based on your hearsay. Have you ever had uh, any uh, backup uh, information uh, like that from uh, police to, to be able to uh, back up? The city eviction? of St. Louis Park and the city of Hopkins actually will issue a letter saying we were called to the property. This is what we found. If okay. they think it's serious. I've had Hopkins write me a letter saying when we came on this call, there was a domestic excuse and we s- saw ev- pot and pipes and or evidence of 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 drug use Mm -hmm. in the property. They, I think, have a three strikes you're out program, but they expect us to evict those people if if and when they tell us to. Now, the other issue is where are criminals going to live? If no city, if every city is going to base the landlord's license well, of course, on whether or not there's criminals there. Of course, you're never going to get that because some people are going to be desperate and they're going to just take some landlords the, the fir- are going to need that's take right, that that's first right, person right. who comes in. So you'll never get rid of it. The other fallacy I, I, I fall into is I keep thinking that if landlords would operate well, we wouldn't have so many ordinances or we would get fewer ordinances passed against us. So if, if these bad landlords were, were punished and in this case, licenses revoked, Perhaps then landlords would behave better and the city wouldn't be so oppressive. Well, I think Mr. McGoy is opening my eyes about that because he's saying it doesn't matter. The city's just oppressive. <laughs> and, it, and it doesn't matter how many landlords strive and strive and strive to produce and, and to create good, safe mm-hmm. housing. The city's just going to keep tying us yeah. up and tying us yeah. up. And the interesting thing in that particular article we were talking about with the Star Tribune and Mr. Samuels is representing North Minneapolis and, and in that particular Council area yeah. uh, because um, uh, there was a tornado that mm-hmm. went through and did a lot of, uh, did a lot of damage. Uh, part of the problem, if I recall uh, reading was uh, not from that article, but uh, from others in the past, um, there have been so many foreclosures over the last few years that there are um, a number of places that were uh, boarded up, not occupied, vacant, and nobody knew who the owner is. As right. a matter of fact, the city of Minneapolis has been trying to locate who the um, yeah. owner is so that they can get them uh, to take responsibility in uh, in repairing and, yeah. and upkeep. Yeah, and you can't track it down. That actually ties in with our next story yes, from Chicago. D- yes, it does. And uh, we've got uh, just a couple minutes here uh, before we uh, okay. come to the top of the hour, but enough time to, I think, uh, kind of frame the conversation here. And uh, you're right. This uh, came out of uh, the Mortgage, Mortgage News Daily, December 13th, uh, from... Uh, Cornelius, North Carolina is where this uh, news organization is. It says FHA, FHFA files lawsuit against Chicago over vacant property rules. The Federal Housing Finance Agency has reacted on two fronts to a recent move by the city of Chicago to enforce its housing codes relating to vacant properties. And um, first it directed uh, the two government-sponsored uh, Enterprises, uh, Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae, uh, to revise their servicing guidelines uh, to account for Chicago's action. And second, it sued the city for interfering (laughs) with the conservatorship. Conservatorship. So from this story, it sounds like what Chicago did was they're trying to enforce their vacant housing ordinances. And like Bill McGoy just said, they have ordinances similar to Minneapolis, where if the housing is vacant, you have to pay a fee or a Mm -hmm. fine. Uh, You have to be, if you're a private owner, you have to be responsible for boarding up that house and making it secure and safe. And probably in the winter, you have to shovel the snow. I know you have to do that here in Minneapolis. But so many foreclosures have occurred that now the mortgage companies own those homes. And so Chicago's saying, hey, mortgagee, you're the you, owner. You take care of this stuff. Yeah. And uh, let's, uh, we've got to take a quick break now. But folks, don't go away. We've got a whole nother hour. And we're going to come back uh, with, uh, the, uh, with more on this particular article, this and so much more on this uh, Merry Christmas morning here. We're broadcasting from AM 1280, The Patriot. Back after this. Love, goodbye. 